Welcome, everyone. This is Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 18th of September, 2023. Uh, we've got several topics on the agenda, including upcoming calendar, uh, news, action items, governance topics. Uli, on governance topics, I put board and officer elections there to give you a moment just to describe where we're at. Are you okay with that as a topic? Yes, that's okay. Super, thank you. And then community activity, several items there. Any additional topics that people want to be sure we add to the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead. So in terms of upcoming calendar, Wednesday will be the next long-term support release 2.414.2. It will also be a security advisory. The security team has announced that 414.2 will include a changes to core to improve security. Uh, by way of note, that means there won't be a weekly release tomorrow. The weekly release will be delayed and delivered the same day as 2.414.2. It will be 2.424, 424, and will be a security increment on top of 2.423. Then any questions on the security release that's coming? Okay, next major event is the ongoing Jenkins officer and board elections. Nominations open today and close at the near the end of October. Voter registration also opens today and closes November 5. And voting will happen November 6 through December 1. Any questions on the officer and board elections? Okay, and Uli, we'll let you talk a little bit about the process later in the meeting, if that's okay. All right, so we've got announcements of the, the elections as a blog post a community post, a tweet, a LinkedIn post, and on the Jenkins Infra GitHub site. So lots of places. Also pleased to announce that Cloudflare is now sponsoring the Jenkins project. And we're looking at possibly using Cloudflare as a way to reduce our cloud costs and improve performance for users of updates.jenkins.io. Thanks to Hervé Lemur and to Damien Deportal for their work on it. And special thanks to Gavin Mogan for his help getting us a connection to someone at Cloudflare. We've got a FIPS 140 Jenkins enhancement proposal that's been proposed by James Nord. FIPS-140 is a US federal government standard for uh, cryptography use in software. And it's commonly required by, by large government and contractors, U.S. government and contractors associated with it. So James has described it there. Java 21 release is coming this week. We are one day away from their scheduled release date. Thanks to Basel and to others for the work there for the to the infra team. Java 21 early access is available on our CI servers. Jenkins Core, the plugin bill of materials, acceptance test harness, and many of the plugins are passing tests on Java 21. And as far as I know, only test changes have been required for Java 21. I'm not aware of any functionality failures. So thanks very, very much. Java 21 is looking quite attractive. No dates. Oh, Basil, go ahead. Uh, do we want to do any uh, communication about this? Because um, I'd be willing to write some kind of external communication, such as a blog post. But the one thing that I fear is that we might uh, be overloading people with too much communication. So maybe if we're planning to announce some other Java-related changes, such as deprecating support for Java 11 in uh, later in October or, or something like that, uh, maybe it would be better to combine all of those those version related announcements into one blog post or one piece of communication rather than uh, making people read, you know, multiple things every couple of, of weeks that are saying something very similar. Good, good question. I'm, I'm open to guidance from others on that one, because for me, it's uh, a larger announcement is there's some power to a larger announcement, but the larger announcement would then be delayed, right? Whereas they could start potentially sooner. Um, Uli, you have any any insights there that you would like to offer in terms of should we should we talk about it sooner or later? 
Actually, no. <laughs> I have. I, I don't know which which is best. So I think one blog post is simpler for us, where we can write everything in one blog post. And for our readers, it's maybe better as well. So consider a, a summary blog post with the Java 11 end of life, uh, Java 21 support, and Java 17, et cetera. So dot, dot, dot. I think that's what you were saying, Uli, is that would be okay for you. And I think that's what Basel was proposing. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. And I'd, I'd be happy to work on that blog post, but I don't think we're ready for it just yet because we still have to add the administrative monitor. Right, right. And and in fact, the admin monitor isn't due until October 3rd. So we've got two weeks before we're ready for it. Great. Okay. I like that. Thanks very much. Anything else on Java 21? The next item of news is that the Google Summer of Code projects for 2023 are going well. Two of them have already completed successfully. Uh, the work is the work is not final in terms of getting it all the way to end users, but the project itself was was concluded successfully and ready for more work to be done. That's GitLab plugin modernization and Docker Compose for tutorials. Uh, two additional plugin, two additional projects were chosen to be extended, and the extensions are have been ongoing. One of them will complete within the next week or so, and the other one, I believe, has two or three more weeks. They're all looking good to pass and uh, looking forward to their results. Presentations were shared last Thursday. Uh, thanks very much to those presenters and to everyone who's acted as mentors. Other item of note is that Prototype JS will be is scheduled to be removed from Jenkins Core October third. Uh, details later in the meeting, and Java end of eleven end of life monitor is to be enabled October third. Anything on the other news topics? Anything that I missed? Okay, next is the action items. So Alex and Uli are running the board and officer elections. And Uli will give you some time later in the meeting to describe more details there. This next action item, I had actually completed it. And the other action items, retrospective, submit the Jenkins IO pull request for sub sub projects, retire the Chinese, oh, those two I've not completed. So, and it will be several weeks before I make any progress, sorry. Um, Kevin, anything you want to report on the retiring the Jenkins, the Chinese Jenkins documentation site? Uh, no, nothing here. Okay, so we'll we'll do some more work separately on that. And I've still got the open task to draft a license license policy change uh, to the board. It's we've got some licenses that are currently used in the Jenkins project, like the JSON license that are not OSI approved, but our documentation says we only use OSI approved licenses. So we need to we need to come to a conclusion on that. I'll draft a proposal and send it around. Any questions on the action items? So we're leading towards just allowing this license rather than trying to do something drastic and eliminate it. My my approach is leaning strongly towards just allow the license. And, and there are several like it, right? Where I think the risk, the legal risk and the project risk is very low of accepting that specific license. And so, but it's gotta be discussed with the board. And thankfully the Linux Foundation provides access to attorneys that can help with identifying the real threats in the legal sense. So we'll use, use Linux. A, it's a public domain license, right? It is. It's a, yeah. it's a, it, they changed it from, what was it from MIT or Apache with a disclaimer that made it no longer MIT or Apache to pure public domain. Yeah. 
I wonder other... if there's any precedent from like others, uh, other projects that have a distribution mechanism, like maybe the Python package index or something like that, where, mm -hmm. uh, where they, I, I wonder if they have a similar, I just wonder if there's any precedent in other open source communities or if we're making this decision for the first time. I'll, that's I'll a, have to that's do a... some research about that. And I would love to love to understand that research. I think that's a very good suggestion is this has to be a problem that others have confronted. And yes, we're a long lived project, but others have surely seen it since we started. How do they deal with a mix of licenses? Uh, good question. Anything else on the open action items? Okay, so I'm going to make a note to myself, review review other projects, responses from other projects to license mix mixture, like uh, PyPy. Very good. Thanks. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't saying that anyone needs to go do any work here i was just curious i was just thinking out loud and, and I'm, I'm happy to go look into this and that'd be great yeah i think i'd love to have your help with it thanks very much basil uli you want to give us a a, a summary of board and officer elections yes uh, i can do it so uh, my part was uh, very very small because i was in holidays for a couple of weeks <laughs> so uh, everything is has been uh, set up by alexander so he uh, started a lot of blog posts, the community posts. He created a document where the process is. Uh, maybe I can post it in the chat, the link where the most recent uh, blog post is. So we can put it in the document here as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, we start now with the uh, registration of the candidates and the voters so we start in parallel uh, the registration for the or the nomination for the candidates uh, is uh, i think it's till october 27th and the voter registration is till november the 5th so we have yeah a couple of weeks time to uh, nominate candidates and yeah to nominate yourself or register yourself as a voter and uh, this process is quite simple you need to go to the community board of jenkins community at jenkins io and there you need to yeah enter these uh, two groups and everything is in the blog post with links so i think everybody will find the way how to proceed and yeah, the next steps, um, I, I'll have a meeting with Alexander uh, tomorrow uh, on how we can split the work. So we will see uh, who is making which thing. So the good thing is we have a good uh, doc document where the process is documented, documented. So I can have a look and see what steps are to do. So I'm not sure if I missed something. So the process is ongoing. Yeah, thank you very much. So we've the announcements are out and we've already got some people who have who've joined the the voter group. We just need to now be sure we promote it actively, encourage people to register. We've got hundreds of Jenkins developers that are contributing. It would be great to have them also be voters. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah. from others? Okay, then let's let's go on to the next topic. So Java 11, 17, and 21 in Jenkins, I'd sent a Google Doc around to members of the board and to officers with a proposal for how we approach a transition to a new way of supporting Java in the Jenkins project, where we shift ourselves away from supporting three Java versions at a time to just supporting two at a time. And my next stop for this is to send it around to Jenkins developers, to the Jenkins user list. And I think I'm going to propose a Jenkins enhancement proposal to formalize it. 
Uh, I wanted to ask the question. I've got a diagram that tries to illustrate that so that people can see visually what's what's happening in the transition. Uh, are there questions or concerns that we should discuss here that that have, have not been resolved? Anything that are, are issues? I think it would be helpful if, if you can show the diagram and uh, demonstrate what we are trying to do. Yeah, okay. So, so the notion with the diagram is that each of the horizontal bars on this picture is a period of life for a Java release. So first bar is first row is Java 11. The second row is Java 17, then Java 21. And what we're trying to do is reach a point where we have a two plus two plus two support model where for the first two years of a new Java release, Jenkins supports it, but does not require it as the minimum version. For the second two years, Jenkins requires it as the minimum version and then uh, supports the next version. And for the last two years, we actually drop support for that oldest Java version so that with a six year life cycle for a Java release, the first four years we support it either as allowed or as required minimum version. And then for the last two years, we drop it off the list so that we're only supporting two Java versions at a time in most cases. Now, I like Basel's point. He and I were discussing this and he noted, this is somewhat of a platonic ideal in that it is a hoped, but not a guarantee that there will never be times when we don't support three Java versions. There will be transition periods. There will be cycles like that. That's not a concern as far as I can tell. It's that the general goal is two plus two plus two feels like a healthy pace for the project to keep up with current Java and not burden ourselves too heavily with supporting older Java versions. Uli, did that describe well enough or is there some other attribute you think should be described? No, that's fine, thanks. Do others have a question or a concern? No, this looks really great. Super. So I will plan to send within the next few days a mail message to the developer list and to the user list discussing this. We know there's a transition period and that transition period will put us into some sort of bumps along the way, right? Instead of supporting Java 17 as minimum version for two years, we'll only support it for a year. Java 21 will be the required minimum version only for 18 months. And then by Java 25, we're finally on the real two plus two plus two model. Um, one question, um, Java 21, we are supporting it already in this month now. No, and that's another problem with this six month slices, right, Uli, is, <laughs> is it once Java 21 releases, I think we actually will begin delivering Java 21 in our containers, but it's not yet even released. So we, we cannot support something that the upstream provider doesn't support. Because I think I need some time for my plugins as well to test it locally. So I think. Of course. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think, I think that's a good reason why the Java 21 announcement blog that, that Basel referenced earlier, it would be good for us to, to combine that with others, do it in early October after we've had a chance to be sure that things are aligned with this. And we can even consider including this in that larger picture blog post. That makes sense. Yeah. So I've seen, a have seen a bunch of versions of this, but uh, one of them that I, one version of this chart that I've seen had the administrative monitor uh, with a different color. And that, that kind of goes along with your point that you just made now about how we won't be ready to ship uh, a new Java version as the default container version uh, for all users, you know, right at the beginning of this, of one of these bars. Um, there's like a, there's basically a period of early adopters and then a period of, uh, you know, mainstream adoption, and then finally a period of getting the stragglers on board before we finally drop support for it completely. Um, and I guess in in this in this chart that all three of those periods are covered by the yellow portion 
Uh, but but within that yellow portion, there's there's a number of different phases of adoption, um, and and part of that includes uh, becoming the default in a new uh, container image, which we would want that to happen rather early uh, in order to accelerate the adoption process. But we wouldn't want it to happen, you know, on the very first day until uh, the early adopters have had a chance to kick the tires. And similarly, we uh, you know, we want to put the administrative monitor in place toward the end of the yellow bar uh, to warn people that uh, that they're coming close to the deadline of, of having to migrate. Would you Good agree? Point. I, I do. Good point. And I had I had pulled the administrative monitor out because I got some feedback that people were not clear when I put a new color in there. What does the, what's the meaning of that color mark? What were you so so you're right. And in fact, you can see the sneaky thing here is here's the color that I had. I hid it because it was it was causing confusion for some of the readers with with the the but you're right. There is there is a there is there is more subtlety than is covered. And maybe it's that one of these bars needs to be expanded in a separate visual, which is, and this is how it will look for this transition because you're right it's not immediately clear that there's a there's a whole range of actions in this first two-year period and even before it that are happening yeah yeah it might be um you could express that by zooming in to the yellow portion in a different uh in a different visual and then saying like yeah before before the beginning of that there's the prep, prep preparatory work like what we've been doing in the last month and then once upstream has released the new java version then there's a whole range of of activities ranging from uh an announcement that it's supported all the way to making it the default in the container image uh and the, the default in the new setup instructions all the way to uh, eventually uh, removing it through an, a, an administrative monitor and then ultimately uh, compilation error um once we require the next version afterwards. But yeah, that's a, that's a very wide range of activities within that yellow bar. And I, I, you know, I think we, we want to roughly distribute them proportionally. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, within, there, there's no hard and fast rules, but we, we usually, in the past, we've given early adopters some amount of time. Um, you know, I think with uh, Java 17, we've maybe given them too much time just because we haven't been paying attention, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, I mean, at the at the very beginning, we don't want to be too aggressive about um, forcing something onto all users before the early adopters have had a chance to kick the tires. Now we have gotten a lot better with automated testing, so we should be more and more confident. About it. when I started working on this, there was more or less no automated testing for new uh, Java versions, and now we could say with a lot more confidence that we're running ATH and PCT and all of these things. Um, so. But yeah, I, I still think we should have some amount of time for the early adopters. We, d we don't want to uh, lose lose the confidence of our users by forcing something that was literally just released, you know, on Tuesday this week as the default in every container image. <laughs> right, right. And I, I like that. I like your suggestion, too, for the visual concept that zoom in to the first two years and talk about talk about what that means as slices of things that happen there. I like that a lot. Thank you. Good suggestion. Yeah. And the, the comment might be that that's a lot of work and it is. Um, but the more, the more formal we get at, or the, the more we formally describe that and, and institutionalize it as a process, the better we'll get at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more automation that we'll develop so that eventually this can happen like clockwork. Right. Good. Any other comments on, on this transition period towards this two plus two plus two model? All right. So let's continue then. Next topic was, oh, I guess there are some key dates upcoming that really just be aware that Java 11 end of life for the Java projects themselves is October of 2024. So Jenkins will not support it beyond its end of life in from OpenJDK so and from Tamarin. So it's it's really we see it coming. 
Next is that the Artifactory Bandwidth Reduction Project has made very good progress and is implemented. We've still got some remaining tasks that we're working. Um, we've announced the, the change in a blog post and really pleased with it, but we've got one or two more things still that have to be resolved. Uh, they're not, as far as we can tell, affecting plugin developers, and they're certainly not affecting users, but we'll keep working those. Any questions there? Okay, next piece is Prototype JS. And this one, so it all started with a blog post back in May from Basel, right? Thanks to Basel and to Tim Jacome for their work on it. We're now September approaching the October, October 3 date when this 10 plus year old JavaScript will be removed from Jenkins. Uh, thanks very much to everybody who's made so much so much progress on it. We've got some lurking plugins that still would benefit by having the change made. Art of JFrog has committed that they'll work on theirs in September. Uh, Fortify from Microfocus likewise. And I actually had contact with Tricentis at DevOps World. So three of the five, there's been at least some contact and some hope. Any questions on the removal of prototype JS? Yeah, why is this specific date? Is this a special date or is this a release? As a it's, that's release? that's a that's a weekly release that is one of the last weeklies before we choose an LTS baseline. Oh. So it's intentionally selected. It's mal malicious is probably the wrong way to say it. It is intentionally selected to allow us to get it into the November fifteen. Uh, long-term support release. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the intent in choosing October 3. Any other questions on prototype? Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard any uh, anyone saying that they need more time or want more time. So this still feels like a good date to me. Yeah, to, to me as well. I'm I'm a little worried that we're mid-September and I haven't seen proof of progress from Artifactory or from Microfocus, but they've been well warned and they've been we've offered them lots of opportunities. All right. Next topic and last one was Hacktoberfest preparation. So beginning October 1, DigitalOcean and others sponsor a month-long event called Hacktoberfest. Jenkins has participated in it for years. Uh, John Mark Messon has sent a message to the developer list, and we've got a series of issues identified that new contributors can help. Uh, we're, we're hopeful for this. We, it will be a different event this year than last year because... DigitalOcean made, I think, a very wise choice. They've decided to stop delivering physical promotional materials, physical swag. So there will be no t-shirt this year. With no t-shirt, we hope that the people who contribute are more likely to contribute because they want to contribute and do something useful. We'll watch it and see. Any questions on any of the topics? Um one question to the Hacktoberfest preparation. Uh, do we still need more issues or do we have enough? Certainly, I think we would benefit by more issues uh, or even more importantly, maybe Uli, to you specifically, we've got a list of good first issues that are in the JIRA system, but most of them were identified 12 months or more ago. And therefore, they've some of them have aged and they're no longer a useful issue. And we need to either close them or get them out of the list. I did a sweep through many of the others, but I didn't touch warnings NG or analysis, figured you could do that. Mm -hmm. And those getting those lists so that a new contributor, when they pick up a, a, an issue, we believe it's got reasonable chance that they can fix it. Uh, some of the ones that I re removed were I looked at it and realized there's no maintainer for this plugin. There is no way if you pick this up, you're going to have a good experience submitting a fix for it. Okay. I, ha I had it on my plan to go through all my issues and mark them as newbie friendly or not, depending on the issue. Okay. Excellent. And that's that's ideal. That that is a that is a great choice. I can 
I can show you the current dashboard that I've been using. I, I find the dashboard quite comfortable. If we look at this thing right here, here's the friendly issues dashboard. I've got to go through core still. I started on core, but I've got to do more review on core, but I've been through these others that are down the list here and felt like, okay, yeah, there's, there's a potential that these will have a, someone to review them and, and we could help. So this friendly issues dashboard has been a great help for me. Any other questions on Hacktoberfest? If we're done with Hacktoberfest, I just wanted to share that while this meeting has been going on, I've been Googling the Python package index this policy on licenses. And it seems like they've mostly focused on OSI approved licenses, but also allow non-OSI approved licenses include, include, they have a separate category for public domain and as well as a few other non-OSI licenses. Uh, there's, a, there's a number of them that that they support officially, uh, even though none of them have a very large number of packages. You know, they they include things like the Netscape public license and the Nokia open source license. There's a number of these non-OSI uh, licenses that they allow. They also have categories for freeware, and they have a, they have a category for public domain, like I mentioned, and they also even have a category for proprietary, um, all of which they allow. Uh, uh, so. I think uh, there's definitely precedence for uh, for featuring uh, non OSI licenses in in other projects. It's it's more a matter of uh, how we feel our community values are best served, right. um, and you know, I I don't see any reason why we couldn't be more permissive about. Um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't be more permissive about certain things like public domain, um, or you know even things like. The Netscape public license or other non um, non OSI licenses. The only the only thing I think would be remotely controversial is either actual proprietary software or uh, some of these uh, more modern uh, like quote unquote open source licenses that are a little bit more controversial. I don't remember the names of some of them, but you know I, I know that there are like new efforts uh, to write. New types of licenses that that might be um, more controversial than some of these traditional things like the Netscape public license, but I don't think anyone's asking for us to approve those. It's only the uh, public domain, and I think that's perfectly fine. Right. Good. Thank you. Thanks for doing that research. That that gives me hope that we've got we've got a path that we can follow that they and other projects have have already pioneered. Very good. Any other topics for discussion today? All right. Thanks, every. Oh, dear. Did I forget to turn on? No, thank you. I didn't.